everyone and welcome to part three in my video series detailing my build in the Minecraft server run by a friend of mine. Uh, the Minecraft server run by a friend of mine. I wish the server had a name. Uh, apparently there, there was some attempt at one point to name the server, but uh, currently it's just the server. Uh, as you can see, quite a lot has changed and it might be a little um, disorienting to see the land in this fashion. Uh, this, is, this is sort of a story, what happened. Basically, Thanksgiving evening, uh, my housemate and I were in a car accident. No one was hurt, but uh, that, that put the car out of commission, and putting the car out of commission meant that I had a lot of extra hours to spend playing Minecraft. So, all of a sudden, my wall got finished, my land got flattened, <laughs> you know, and so it's only been a couple of days since the last video, but I've had a lot of time to work on it. Um, as you can see, uh, the wall is now finished, and uh, I've got these cool little torches, these sort of torch fence arrangements here on the corners. Um, the villagers are still safe, as you can see here. Um, there's actually a wall floating over their pit right now. Um, and I've started sketching out the frame of a house uh, that will live inside the fenced wall. You will also notice that I have some livestock now. Uh, that is again thanks to my friend Cheesius who came over to visit me. Uh, he brought some animals with him uh, after he made his trip across the countryside to come see me. And uh, while he was here he also helped me with the train station. I suppose that's probably the most impressive part of what's happened uh, since since the last video, although I do think that rounding out this hill, sort of smoothing it out, is one of my finest accomplishments. Uh, I had to sort of cut a cliff into the hill to make room for the, the door, uh, excuse me, to make room for the wall going around there, and uh, then I had to sort of smooth out the hill so it didn't look so fake. Um, I did this by utilizing creepers. Uh, the creepers would charge me and I'd just sort of stand there and let them blow me up and they'd blow a hole in the hill. I'd spawn back at the library, run over, hop over the fence again and find another creeper. Oh, that's interesting. Little bug, whatever. Must have leaned on a key. Anywho, um the train station. That's the big one. Um, let's have a look down there. Uh, as I said, Cheesius came over and we spent a lot of time working on this, mostly tunneling. Uh, this is the train station as it currently exists. Uh, I'm not super happy with the wood here. I think I'm probably going to switch it to either smooth stone or uh, the stone brick stuff here, but you never know. Uh, basically, it's a pretty standard, from what I understand, train train system. We use a minecart. Put it down here. Press the button, and the train takes off, like so. Uh, powered rails, of course, uh, carry the train, car, the minecart all the way to the train station. Obviously, it doesn't have the same mass when there's no person in there. And trains, of course, come back down here, down this track, and head back into the station just like this. And zip around this corner, up, around, and fall, and they're right back on the power train. Um, that works pretty well, honestly. Uh, we haven't had any problems with these tracks, uh, with this system. Uh, this is all decorative here, but uh, just something to do. I also made a uh, little waiting area here for uh, waiting for someone to arrive or leave in the train. I don't know why. But I also put a trunk here for people who have, uh, you know, come to my house and forgotten that they l brought a whole bunch of materials with them that they didn't intend to bring, and they can put it in the chest here and then pick it up before they leave. Very handy. Very handy to have. Uh, this is 
this is just the hallway here and you'll notice that this automated door is reversed so that you have to open it from the inside and it auto closes. This is so that the villagers, once I have them roaming around the house, will not be able to make their way down to the train station. Um, and yeah, over here is the library, and it's it's slowly getting disassembled for materials. Uh, eventually, this will be gone, and will be part of the house, of course. Uh, there's a wall here, and I have sort of a rudimentary rug started. Uh, I'll need to get serious about about sheep if I really want to put rugs in the, in the wall. Excuse me. If I really want to put rugs in the house, I will have to get a bit more serious about collecting the wool. Other than that, uh, the only other really awesome thing is just the outside of the wall. I'm pretty proud of the way the wall came out. And I'll have a quick look up there so you can see what that looks like. Uh, this is my very low rent airlock system here to keep the animals inside. But as you can see, the wall here has a spider proofing ledge so the spiders can't get up and over, and uh, it still retains sort of a medieval motif. On the outside, I think it looks pretty good. It's got a nice cobblestone foundation here. And on the inside, that cobblestone is not visible because the land is raised up one block. Uh, so that the wall is not quite so towering from the inside. But that's about it. Uh, so far, so good. The house is evolving into a manor house, I guess. I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep this smooth stone brick material here. I might end up replacing it with wood or something. I'm just a little concerned that with the wooden floors it will be too much wood. So we'll see how that, I'll do some experiments and we'll see how that turns out. But for now, um, that's where this project is. So until next time, take care.